Okay, great. Right, and so, you know, coming up this week, have you ever wondered how you can fly a wing walker? I went up in one, but how do you actually fly it? And how careful do you need to be, really? I think quite careful. You've got someone on the wing. That's sort of skill involved, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, well, we're going to find that out for you. And something else, I believe? Yes, absolutely. The Mosquito helicopter as well. Um, amazing little machine. We've heard about it before from... Um, um, uh, John Snyder in southern uh, uh, Indiana and uh, lots more about that as well. But in the meantime, while we're making our way down to Canterbury, here's some news for you. I'm going to start off with this one while Rick actually tries to navigate past the shooting range. I mean, if you think about it, the 152 does look a little bit like a duck. It's like a box, isn't it? It's like a great oh, box. big box as well. No, but in fact, it, it is actually duck, I think. But, hey, oh, anyway. What do you think is the biggest problem with travelling by an airliner? Is it the not so very comfy seat? Is it low budget airlines trying to charge you to use the toilet or maybe make you stand up? Yeah, yeah. Well, it seems, it doesn't, like we know that it doesn't really go exactly where you want it. You've got hours of travel either end. But apparently, Bruce Willis has the answer to all of our worries. Build your own. He's, according to examiner.com, he's planning an 8,000 feet runway. The locals don't seem to be too happy about it. And we all know that dealing with NIMBYs might, who might take a different approach to international terrorists, hell-bent on mindless destruction. <laughs> Interesting one also from the States um, that I noticed this week as well is that the US Forestry Service uh, have been praising aviation because you might think, listen to some people, that the only environmentally friendly way of going into the forest and you know, going into nature places uh, around the world is to go into a sort of perpetual power of eco bicycle, but in fact, one thing I'm having a job about talking to uh, but uh, in fact, actually, according to them, aircraft is the best way because you don't have to build roads or anything like that, and you just fly in. It allows loads of people to enjoy the scenery without destroying the scenery. So aviation, in fact, is environmentally very, very friendly. Well, I think that's great news, and we should all take that on board. Yes. They're obviously right. Yeah, absolutely. Who would argue with the US Forest be first? Exactly. Um, now, you might have thought that the Terrafugia Transition R was the only flying car in development. Well, you'd be wrong. It's actually not so. This one we featured last year, in fact, and the Skybike is still underway, and the company now say, I've got it right here, that they are, have something even better in the form of a switchblade. This is really interesting. Really? In America, yeah. The only catch I hear is that while this promises car performance on the ground and a pretty nippy 134 miles an hour cruise, it still just promises, whereas the transition has actually flown. Uh-huh. So, well, the transition's not very pretty, is it? No, it's not. But, you know, that Phantom Motorworks have an engineering prototype, but we're still yet to see how this one's going to look and properly in the air and if it's going to work. So, moving on then. And last week, the panel returned with a discussion about getting into flying. If you missed it... Here's the recap. Of course it is. Flying is one of the most exhilarating experiences you'll ever come across. It really is. And uh, we were talking about price. It's not expensive to get into. So, you know, let's get everybody up and flying as soon as possible. Um, yeah, again, I think it is a perception. I think uh, Sebastian hit the nail on the head when he says, nowadays, with the medias that we have, you can sit in front of your laptop. Young kids now who are learning to fly between 18 and 24 are used to using computers, and it's part of their learning process. So you put your CD in, you sit down, and it goes through it. In our day, when Sebastian and I were learning, you did have to just read these great big thick books. And now, uh, it's a lot, lot easier. So for young people, yeah, I think it's a lot easier for them. Well, I was going to say trial lesson, but I think another thing you could do to find more about it is talk to some of the institutions. There's some really supportive institutions, such as the Guild of Air Pilots and Air Navigators, that's the UK one, isn't that's it? A, that's a UK institution. There's the Royal Aeronautical Society, who who aren't specifically focused on uh, piloting, but they cover the broad range of disciplines within aviation. And they're again two really welcoming and helpful institutions that you could talk to. Right. I think worldwide people need to think more about what kind of flying they want to do. Rather than just go for motorised, you can do gliding, hang gliding, you can do uh, microlighting. There are many other facets involved in aviation, so rather than just focus on, oh, I'm going to fly a powered aircraft, you can do anything. So rather than just look at that, open your eyes. Every country has loads of different sport flying going on, so uh, there's the opportunities. And we'll have more straightforward advice like that for you very soon. Now, we have a DVD, yes. People have been asking for it for a while, but the, the 
It's not your typical 9 to 5 Monday through Friday job. Uh, as you move out through your career, you'll start flying different routes, different places, different hours. You'll work weekends, you'll work nights, you'll work days. You have the ability to bid for your job every month. So every month you can go in and you can decide where do I want to work tomorrow? What hours do I want to work tomorrow? So there's a big lifestyle component to the job. That's very appealing. Sure. The, the progress as you go to a flight training camp, such as Delta Connection Academy or one of these other ones, you get all your ratings, you build your hours. An hours building is when you get hired by an airline, they want to make sure you have so much experience. So typically they have a qualification you have to meet. Once you meet that qualification, you go into an uh, interview. And it's a screening process and they look at your curriculum that you've done, they look at your scores, you look at your marks, they see how you present yourself because you're the face of that company when you get hired. So it's very visible position. So they want to make sure you can present yourself in front of them. You get hired, you go into a first officer training. Now you're learning what the airline and how their processes and procedures work. They'll give you, get you a type rating and the specific equipment you're going to fly, whether it's 737, 757, an Airbus, uh, and they'll type you for that. And then you start. You get in the right seat and you start flying legs and you build your hours and you build your seniority. Now, we did get some emails asking us why were we at Oscar, but the reason why is, and we said this in the member emails around that, is that because we only want to do a show if we can do it really well, if we can cover it in detail and really do it, otherwise we're just going to be doing what everyone else is doing, and we don't want to be all so rant, we want to be at the top, of course. Um, I want to mention, congratulations to Lewis Lang, he emailed me uh, just the other day, saying that he's uh, just passed his skills test, oh, so he is yeah. now a qualified pilot, welcome to the air. Um, past the mid air, so congratulations to him, a big shout out to him. And don't forget, down the bottom of the screen also, um, there is the ticker, which will put all new pilots, if you email us, let us know about your name, to put your name on there, and let the world know that you are now up in the air officially. So congratulations to Lewis. Yeah, congratulations, Lewis. Well, that's all we've got time for today. We're back on Wednesday and Friday, and again on Monday next week. You're watching fullflap.tv.